Hey, good morning, everyone. To all you who've uh, chosen to join us today for another CBMC live event here in the Central California Valley. Uh, I am just super excited today to be able to come to you guys and uh, with a couple of people that I've known for a very long time, getting a chance to share their stories. Uh, a couple of guys who are, have been in the um, media industry for several years. And we're gonna be talking about those challenges that presents. We're gonna be talking about ethics. We're gonna be talking about their story and how they managed all of that being in this industry and also maintaining their Christian faith and integrity. Uh, my name is Steve Hosey. I'm with CBMC Fresno. Um, and like every time you know uh, we get together, I just wanna uh, welcome you and, and ask that uh, you know if you're there in the audience and you wanna ask some questions, we'll have an opportunity to do that afterwards. But here at CBMC, uh, we just want to be an open door to connect, connect businessmen with Christ. That's our mission here at CBMC. And this is one of the reasons why we're here in front of you today, to have these two men share their stories about Christ in their workplace uh, and hopefully impact some lives there. So with that, let me introduce you to our guest today, uh, Mr. Orlando Gomez. He is the owner and creator of Stellar Lens Productions and also Coach Q. Uh, you may have seen him around on some of our ESPN broadcasts with Fresno State basketball uh, and does a host of other things as well, including motivational speaking here up and down the state and, uh, and across the country for that matter. So um, we're going to start off um, with uh, Mr. Gomez today, and we're going to ask Orlando, um, just go pose the question again, right? We're living in strange times. We're living in times where you know, the Christian faith is under fire a lot. And sometimes depending on even what industry you're in, it can be uh, a little tougher than most. Um, so with that, I wanted to just give Orlando a chance to talk a little bit about himself, uh, share a little bit about his faith and to talk about his journey being in the industry and how that's uh, affected him. Absolutely. Um, thanks, first and foremost, thanks for having me here. This is exciting. Uh, I'd love to be a part of this and share stories and uh, insight. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely in, in a strange time right now, and, and particularly in, in, the, in the media industry where I come from, I have 16 years of, of running a video production company and, and working a little bit in the film TV space. Um, you know, the, 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 thing with, the thing with media is it's, it's generally used as um, a tool for shaping culture. And when the, the powers that be, the, the systems and, and, and the legacy there is not exactly godly, um, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to insert yourself into that narrative, into, into that, that space and not be kind of forced into, um, to a, a certain, a certain worldview that, that they want to present. Um, you know, I, I, not just on screen, but also, you know, in the work environment and, and, and being you know, on set in production offices and in studios, et cetera. Um, it, it's, it is fairly hostile. Um, it not, not always explicitly outwardly and, and, and people, you know, condemning and shouting at you, but it's, it's made pretty clear, um, you know, what, what views are acceptable and what views are not. Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of that comes down to whether or not people bring you back and, and hire you on for, for new jobs once they do know where you stand on certain things. Um, it, that's, that's, that's a real, real issue we face. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, besides the task of having to actually do your work, right, and produce something Correct. that is meaningful um, and that is, um, you know, outstanding in its quality of what you're trying to produce, there's also other forces out there. And it's also that force that seems like it's always pushing against you, that's, that's pushing your ethics, right? It's pushing your ethics and, and when do I, which, which direction do I go? And when do I stand to my ethics? Talk to me a little bit about that and, and that strain that it puts on, on you in performing your job. Absolutely. You, you know, so I, I've, always, I've always looked at things in, in a sense that, cause you know, you don't really get a whole lot of opportunity to really express um, your beliefs and, 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 and share your faith. Cause again, it's not, it's not entirely welcome. Um, but I've, I've learned that how you carry yourself in an ethical situation, um, is really where you can allow, um, you know, the, the light of Christ to shine is, is through the way you conduct your business, conduct yourself. Um, you know, I, one of the saddest things I've heard is I, I've, I've literally heard and this wasn't too long ago either. A producer literally told me, um, you know, no one will screw you over more in business than a Christian because they can justify anything. And it's like, wow, okay. Um, I don't really 
know how to respond to that. Uh, I'm sure we could fill in that blank with anybody, but um, you know, obviously they had they had a negative experience in 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 with somebody who professed to be a, a believer of faith, and and that's that's the chip they carry now. And so for me, it, it had been I, I need to let my work ethic, work hard and, 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 and present myself above board at all times, always take the high road and let that speak for itself. Let the work speak for itself, but let the character speak for itself as well. And then there's really nothing anybody can really, you know, leverage at you and, and, and throw, at you, throw at you and shove in your face and say, you know, that's why we don't like Christians because of that, right? You don't give them that opportunity. And and that's hard. And and that means making the the hard right decision and even when you can make some small easy compromises to get people off your back but you you can't you can't give that space and that opportunity for for that compromise for someone to be able to to point at that later on down the road and say told you you're just exactly what we thought you were yeah no i get it man i understand i've seen a little bit of that in the business that i've been involved in throughout the years and i think it's important to note that as the christian businessman connection right one of the things that we do is, is that we're really strong and believe in mentorship and really mm -hmm. taking people under their wings and walking them through and seeing what, what it really looks like in real life. Uh, sometimes as Christians, we will read the Bible, we understand, but what does that look like? What is the practical application of that? And so right. surrounding yourself with other businessmen who share your beliefs is something that we strive to do because that, that, adds to more accountability to what we're doing. It strengthens us in those times when right. the um, pressures of our business and our world is coming down on us. And it can come down pretty hard at times, right? But to know you have some brothers who share the same beliefs that you can come alongside to encourage you, that's one of the things that we love to do here at CBMC. Um, and that's why, you know, again, I want to have you on uh, to kind of share those stories because, you know, it can be rough out there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and here's the deal. I, I genuinely believe that, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, hostile work environments and, and business ethics and things of that nature, I believe that we are called to do the right thing, not just because it's the right thing and, and to, to present yourself above board, but I genuinely feel like it's, there's also a practical application to it as well, right? Like if you are known as that guy who does things right, who takes care of people, who's on it, who does great work, like just naturally in a practical business sense, that returns its own, its own yield. It yields its own return in and of itself. And people are, are, are drawn to that. People will hire that back, hire those people back, um, invest in that. Um, so it's not just being, you know, holier than thou, right. And, and trying to be like, you know, I'm, I'm goody two shoes. No, I mean, there's, there's, there is a practical, reason for it as well um I, I think and i think god honors that both in 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 the tangible and in the intangible you know absolutely i agree with you 100 percent. you know when we as as believers honor the word of god and always do our best to put him first and that's not to say we're perfect because we do make mistakes but when our heart is to do right by god my experience has always been that he's been faithful and honoring in us in those things and absolutely. that's always comforting to know that's one of the things that we have as Christian believers is that we have that faith and comfort of knowing that we don't, we're not in this alone and we have uh, our Lord and savior. That's, that's there to help us through those times. So man, those are great thoughts, Orlando. I appreciate that, man. I'm going to circle back around to you a little bit later with a couple of other questions, okay. but uh, thank you for some insight there. Um, right now um, we're going to go ahead and, and move over to uh, coach Q coach Q was up there and uh, let me go ahead and, and, and put coach Q on the uh, spotlight there. So we can always, uh, see see him and and have him share his story a little bit uh go ahead and introduce yourself coach and um i'm mark North q park. jones oh pardon me i'm mark q jones and thank you for having me on uh, uh steve uh, you've been a part of our family since you became best friends with uh, my like an older brother but the person i look up to tom goodwin and you've been a, a positive impact on just like what orlando said about your reputation as a Christian, people see your life and you minister to people by what you do and how you do it. And you've been that in our family for many years, over to almost 30 years. So um, thank you for having me on. And it's like an honor to have <laughs> be here with you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Well, Mark, I want to ask you this question, man. You know, I know you've been in a lot of situations uh, through media. You do a lot of public speaking, not only just here in California, but across the country. Uh, and, and just echoing a little bit of what Orlando said, you know, it, it's tough, right? Sometimes there are things that you would like to say or do and share, but being in an industry that's not so welcoming to that, how have you navigated that? Or, or basically, how has your faith brought you, to, brought you to where you are today in this particular industry? How has that all played a part in it? Well, I, I literally coached for years, uh, and I know I kind of got fired up about you and didn't say a little bit about me, but, you know, I coached for years, uh, high schools, junior college, I consulted to some NBA, uh, NBA teams. And, and when I was way too young and coaching at uh, Yuba college, the Holy spirit really showed me that I would go into self-help speaking. And, um, you know, that's something certainly that is, uh, almost like ministry, like preaching. My mom had told me as a child that she felt God had sent me and that I was meant to do certain things. And of course, I've had other people tell me that, and I thought that meant a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit on the opposite of, uh, not on the opposite of, of what Orlando was talking about, but I really, you know, when you feel like you have talent and God has given you some talent, the key thing is that realizing that God has given it to you and less about the industry, but more about me mm. in terms mm. of how do I do the right thing and let God work in my life in a way that I'm not pushing and trying to do God's job. So for instance, in sports, you are taught to be relentless, relentless, go after it, go after it. In prayer, you got to wait. <laughs> I mean, it's a very, very different deal. Nothing's happening. You know, when you're trained to always be, to go after stuff, it is, uh, you have to really use your faith in that way. And uh, I, re I remember my mom uh, sharing a lot of biblical stories. So I had to always go back to my upbringing and learning more about God and how that helped me in the industry that is about me, about show, about, you know, all that kind of stuff was, she said, well, you know, you're like Joseph. I think you're a little bit arrogant. <laughs> and I said, well, you've been telling me all these years, God has given me something. She said, no, but you better get ready to walk through some hot sand. And that's what Joseph had to go through when his brother sold him to slavery. And I had to, in my life, go through a lot of things that taught me the power of God. I didn't have the best relationship with my earthly father. And I feel that that's always a spiritual attack for men. Our father, which art in heaven, if we don't like the father we have here on earth, it's sometimes hard to trust the father that we have up there. The father here has taken care of you, isn't sensitive to you is really a challenge at times to trust God. And my walk through that desert at times, being rejected, seeing visions that I was gonna one day talk to people or do things, it was a long way off. God was like, hey, I gotta show you a little something. You're gonna misinterpret it because you're gonna put the world's view on it. But I'm gonna send you through this process uh, so that when you get in front of the Pharaoh, so to speak, because Orlando did say it is a rejection. And they say, how did you get here? Or how did you figure this out? I can only say, because I know I was a bad student, I know I struggled with anxiety and learning and memory, only God put me here. At the end of the day, I know that God has allowed me to work with a great a partner named Paul Leffler, who always, his saying is, God's plans are better than ours. And I worry about my, my faith with my issues in a world that can get you sucked into fame, power, all of that. What do you go to? And I think Orlando hit it best um, when he talked about you know, 
people watching you. Yeah, I mean, you know, Paul Leffler, they said Paul was a Christian. I was like, no, no, no. I worked with him. You've worked with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he is, period. <laughs> and I, that's a, that mentors to me. And then, you know, having tools and something I got when I was very young and coaching was my mom gave me a one-year Bible. And I would really encourage all of your viewers, this was my playbook. And Hose, you know that in sports, there is a strategy. Yes, and if the yes. enemy knows your strategy better than you know it, you're always in trouble. So 25 years ago, I started to read the one-year Bible. And I read it every year. It's the same gospel, the same Bible. But I'm going through different things over the last 25 years that every year I read a story is something different because I'm in a different place. But I know God's word and I know the strategies. And that's something that I really want to encourage that has helped me through this journey in my life and trying to be on the media, trying to be uh, feel like I've been called to do something. And it didn't look like how I thought it would look. But as I learned more about God's word, I see that Joseph didn't see himself in the palace. He just, you know, he knew something was coming, but he didn't know what. And throughout his life, it never looked like it was going to get there. And that's the way God does things. You're out of it completely. You're on the ropes. You just resign to things won't go well. And then boom, here you are. They clean you up, put you in front of something. And all you can say is, not me, but God. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's great stuff right there, Coach. So um, let me let me just go back a little bit and recap, man, because I really love what you were saying there. And a few things stood out to me. Um, number one, you mentioned like how as athletes, you know, we're taught to go, 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 right? But as Christians, we're taught, no, you got to pray and wait. Um, but that's the action, right? So like you yes. said, the Bible is the plan. The action for us is, is, is not the shot or the, or the pitch. The action is actually uh, the prayer. And that's what we're called to do as Christians that our first thing is to do is pray. So I, I really love that. And then also the thing that stood out to me, man, is the foundation, right? You had family there who was willing to sit you down and come alongside of you and show you these things. So even at an early age, you were getting that foundation so that when God's plan was finally being revealed to you over time, you had enough foundation there to stick it out. You had enough foundation there to continue on that road. Uh, because it sounds like to me, and we talk about where you are now uh, and the things that you've accomplished in media, th that a lot of it really has to do with about faith, right? And that journey, the journey that the Lord put you on and having faith that he will put you where he wants you to be. And not necessarily you being where you want it to be, but God knowing us better than we know ourselves can make yeah. that so fruitful and so exciting. And that's the thing, again, you know, being a Christian, those things get me excited, right? Because I know I might think that this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. But if I let God take me where that is, it's going to be so much better, right? You know, that is really, I think, so important to catch on to. And just a couple of notes that I put down about what I thought was important about this journey for me that I think people in business uh, careers is that there's something about when God calls you that you will be alone with talent. You have a ton of talent. And just because you got the talent and you can go and make that business deal or you can have a huge company and franchise it and be all over. God may say, I didn't give you the talent for that. I want you to have a, a good home life. I want you to take care of this person or do that. Just because you have it doesn't mean you should do it. I look at what David was like when Samuel came over to his home. His family had rejected him. And he was not there when the most powerful man in the country came to his house. So some of you that have a lot of talent that are doing the waiting game, and for men, Satan can really use things to emasculate you as you wait. Remember that David's blessing, when Samuel came to David's house, David's father's home, they could not sit down until they had gone and gotten David out of the field. So your blessing can't go anywhere if you just stay cool. Don't get resentful <laughs> out there with those smelly sheep. And after David got anointed, he went right back out there. He didn't end up in the palace. 
I look at Joseph, the same thing. Here he is, he's out there. He gets in front of, you know, he goes through all of this stuff. He's doing the right thing, doesn't sleep with this beautiful woman. You know, if people of power have someone, someone attractive, he gets in a dungeon, which is dark. He's helping people and he's saying, well, Lord, where are you? You forgot about me, but God hasn't forgot about you. And then I got a good friend that I think is like Daniel, who stands up and says the Christian, the right thing, the godly thing. And even with all the success you may have for somebody in business out there, you still may end up in the, in the lion's den like old Daniel. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're right, man. And you, so, know, you know, God's faithful. That's all I'm saying is when you're down there, they won't be hungry for you. They're just waiting for dinner to show up. And it's not you. No, absolutely right, man. And and I want to take this back to to Orlando as well. And and because I know you guys personally, and I know uh, some of your stories. And and so I want to take this back to Orlando when when Coach Q was talking about being in that uh, in that dungeon, being in that valley, right? Just touch a little bit on what it's like when you go through those struggles as a businessman, when you're trying to get the company off the ground, when you're trying to land that contract, and you just have to keep pushing. And, and your faith is being stretched and tested throughout that way. Tell us a little bit about that dungeon situation for you, so to speak. Yeah. Um, well, frankly, it, it sucks. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know how, how else to say it. I mean, it's, it's especially because you're, you're put in this position where, um, you know, it's, it's hard enough to run a business and, and get a business off the ground. And, you know, you, you got, there's so much to learn. You're like, okay, so you get into an industry because you enjoy doing the thing, right? The, 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 the passion, the, the, the whatever your skill set is. Um, but you have to learn how, you know, you have to learn about taxes and payroll. You have to learn about the different laws and permits. You have to learn how to do budgeting. You have to learn, you know, how to, you know, customer service, all these different things. Um, and, and it's really easy and tempting to cut corners, right? Um, you know, maybe, maybe we don't carry the insurance policy we should. Maybe we don't pay people what we should. Maybe we don't, whatever it may be. Um, and, and it's hard. And especially when you look around, you see, sometimes you see your competitors who are doing those things or who aren't doing this, who are doing things in, inappropriately or incorrectly or taking advantage of people. And they seem to be doing much better mm. than you, right? And it's like, like God, come on, man! Like I'm, I'm here doing everything you're asking me. I'm, I'm obeying my government. I'm doing, I'm playing by the rules. I'm doing things right. And look at these guys! Like they're not doing any of that stuff, and and they're, they're making, they're ranking it, ranking it in, you know. And like, I'm barely meeting my my bills, right? And so it's, it's really easy to get embittered and, and to get disheartened and frustrated. But I, I, again, I genuinely believe that it's, it's part of the testing. It's part of the shaping of character. Um, and, and there is, there is a, a bigger picture, a, a long game, if you will, that, that you're playing, but there also is, you know, the immediacy that, you know, you don't know, you know, how, how things are going to play out by, by making that that taking that shortcut and taking advantage of somebody or whatever it may be, how that might immediately impact your business. But you can be sure in the long run, it's, it's more than likely going to come back and bite you. Um, you know, I, I look specifically and, and I was talking with my wife last night and it's like, you know, it's funny because I feel like we run into these things all the time, but in retrospect, it's kind of hard to like really pinpoint anything in particular. But, but one thing that did, did really stand out is um, from the very beginning when I started my production company, like I, I did everything um, by the book in terms of like legally speaking. So like I, I got my business license right off the bat. I got insurance right off the bat. I was doing contracts and, and pulling permits for every shoot that I had. I was doing all these things that nobody does, right? Especially when you're a small startup production company. Um, and in unbeknownst to me, I, it kind of became a known thing and people knew that that's, that's what I was doing. And so there came a day where I was, I was out of town and I got a call from somebody that I worked with and he's like, Hey, we, I'm, I'm working on this shoot here in town, this short film. Um, and we have this location They're They're going to let us use it. It's going to be great, but we don't carry production insurance and the, the director doesn't have 
production insurance and they require us to have it to get into that place. Like you, you carry production insurance, don't you? And I was like, of course. Like, okay, well, is there any way we can use yours? <laughs> like, I, I was, like, can we do that? And I said, sure, it's easy. All you have to do is you have to m- attach my company to the project. I become a producer. It, it's this is part of my company's project now, and then I can cover your your uh, in, insurance. Um, and we did, and they did. And fast forward five years later, that director is now one of my good friends who has a multi-million dollar film project on the table based off of that short film. And oh. he has he has brought me in to be his his number two because I know oh. business and, and I've done it oh. right from the beginning. I didn't know that. I, I didn't even know <laughs> the guy. I didn't know I didn't even know the guy at the time. Uh, you know, I knew the person who was reaching out to me. And so and that was five years, <laughs> right? I, I didn't I didn't see the fruit of that for a long time and again not that everything's going to play out that way but nor should that be the reason why we do it but i I, again there is a practical tangible uh, affirming reason aside from the ethical and moral because that's what god wants of you so um no that's 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 such a great story to get out there let people know that god is faithful right even when we don't see it there. And that five years may have felt like 40 years in the desert. And we don't always see that fruit, but we know our God, our God is faithful. And that's just a, a great testimony to that. So thank you for that story, Lando. Hey, uh, Coach Q, we are running out of time. No, we have a little bit of time it. left, man, but I wanted to just yeah. give you another opportunity. If there's anything else you wanted to do, a shout out or just something on your heart you want to share yeah, I just, before we wrap well, this up. Yes, uh, I was reading about Esther this morning, Mordecai, and you mentioned mentoring. We need good mentors out there who know how to reach people that don't insult them. Don't hold on to your power too long. God has somebody else coming up. In the secular world, I saw a billionaire son lose a lot of money and I saw how caring he was to teach him. And I oftentimes see in the spiritual world that ministers and people of faith beat up people. And it's funny I asked him, well, why were you so kind to your son when he made this mistake? He said, one day he's going to inherit all this. I'll be dead. And I want him to know that he can make mistakes and recover. Mm. Mordecai told Esther, you were put in this position. uh, You may have been put in this position for a time like this. So as we age and new people are coming in that maybe we don't understand, maybe you were put in for a time like this to help someone else make it. Maybe the talent you have isn't for you, it's for God's use. And that's the biggest thing I learned about my journey in the media. I haven't lost any weight, didn't make a ton of money, but I feel like God's blessed me. (laughs) Yeah, no, without a doubt, man. I I, I know the Lord has blessed you because when I look at you, I see that smiling face. I see you enjoying what you're doing. I see the blessings of the Lord on you, Coach uh, Coach Q. So, hey, thank you guys so much, man. I really appreciate you guys sharing uh, your stories and your life and your walk with Christ in, in an industry that, uh, again, it's, it can be a little hostile at times and some of the challenges that come with that. So it's been much appreciated. I hope to have you guys on sometime in the future and have you at one of our, our luncheons. Speaking of which, before I go, just a couple of quick announcements for those who are watching. Um, we're, we're opening up, guys. We're opening up. We're here on the West Coast and we're getting ready to start meeting again um, in person. And so we really enjoy that. We're going to continue our CBMC lives, but we're going to open up and start meeting in person. So our sister company, CBWC, they're going to have a luncheon on the 22nd uh, coming up just next week, and they're going to get together with the ladies. So if you know some, some ladies and some, some businesswomen who would like to get together and fellowship and connect, let them know about our event. Um, check out our website, the CBWC Fresno, and also the CB, uh, CBMC and CBWC. You can find that information on the website June 22nd for information on that. We as CBMC are gonna meet on July 15th. Uh, we're gonna have a couple on there and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, you know, have a lunch at Pardini's restaurant here. We're gonna to get together. We're gonna to continue to connect businessmen and women to each other and to Christ, uh, the mission that the Lord has given us in that. So thank you again. Um, my name is Steve Hosey once again with CBMC Fresno and it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot.